You are now watching a Lucky Penny Shop product feature. Hey, it's Lucky Penny Shop. Thanks for stopping by today. I really appreciate it. Exciting day for me because I am now, hopefully for you too as well, I'm going to go deeper into the Easy Bake history with the Easy Bake Award Winner Recipes that were created starting back in 1998. Now, this is from the Todd Coopy book, Light Bulb Baking, which I've shown you before and uh, uh, gave you all the history through the book and then showed you the ovens that he had displayed in there. But now it is the recipes in the back. Now, these were contest winners. The first one from 1998 was the Toffee Trifle Cake. So I'm going to follow these in order. Then I'm going to move on to the second one, which is the Chocolate Moose Cake. That one is from the year 2000. Then I will go to the Marshmallow Cloud on a Heart from 2003. That one sounds good. The Easy Bake Carrot Cake from 2004. And then from 2009, the Queen of Hearts Strawberry Tart. Now I'm all set. I've got all the mixes that were required to make these recipes. And then uh, really what I need to do is get all my supplies, get my kitchen set up, and we will get started. So let's do that. All right, well, I thought it'd be fun before I actually start grabbing supplies to give you a little look at the kitchen in more detail. Now I'm gonna make, I decided I'm gonna make a video just for this kitchen. I've never done it before to give you the behind the scenes, show you how it originally worked with the batteries and then how I had it modified to work for my situation. So the refrigerator there on the far left, and then you see this stove here, which is one I've been using or will be using for non-Easy Bake videos. I might use it, we'll see. And then here is the Easy Bake oven that I chose. This is the only Easy Bake oven that was front loading. You know, most Easy Bakes are actually all Easy Bakes. You put it on one side and it comes out the other, it would not work in this situation. So I grabbed this oven for my collection, and then I modified with a stand uh, that actually uh, fit right place there. I kind of made it to fit in there. And then the lighting, you will see I have that all set up, ready to go. And then there is the sink way over there and a dishwasher. Both are running and working. I probably should do that video next because you probably want to know how all this works. And I would like to show you the electronics that I have, the water system that I have. It's all fresh water and then it drains. And then, you know, any other little features that hopefully you'll be interested in. If you have questions about it, just ask them now so I can answer them when I make that video. All right, like I said, I need to grab those supplies. So let's do that. Then we'll start making this trifle cake. Okay, so first things first, I want you to grease the pan. So I'm going to do it the older way with butter and flour, which is what you would have seen in some of the earlier Easy Bake uh, recipe books. And I've done it this way, and then I've done it with the uh, cooking spray, so you can do either one. I don't think it's necessarily going to make a difference, although the butter is it that added flavor, right? Okay. Now a little flour in there and you just kind of spread it around, coating the inside of the pan. Okay. Pan one is ready. Well, let me just do pan two while I'm here. Let me change the camera angle just slightly. I seem to be working down in this section. Now, the more I thought about this, and I've thought about this quite a bit, it's been a couple weeks of prep and getting ready and finishing some other videos, looking at the recipe, I'm like, that particular scale of recipe 
It doesn't actually fit in the scale of this kitchen. And I thought, well, let me cut it. But then that kind of defeats the purpose, doesn't it, of doing the actual recipe? So I'm going to stick to the recipe because it calls for, well, let me go over it real quick. Two Easy Bake Oven Plain uh, Yellow Cake Mixes, which I have. And then one small box of vanilla instant pudding. Now you saw that earlier. It says small box, but I don't know of any other boxes of Jello instant pudding that are any smaller than that. And then it calls for one and a half cups of milk, cold milk, and then one small tub of Cool Whip. Now it says small tub. I guess there might be giant sized tubs. I haven't shopped for them in a while. So I just got the regular standard small size tub. Now that's quite a bit to actually fit in a kitchen this size, but we're going to maybe bring the table in, we'll see, and do that aspect on my table. I know recently I talked in a video about how many people have actually, you know, used their table as part of their baking. All right, so there you go. Those are set. Let's uh, get to the first mix. Okay, so I do have to make two cakes. Uh, this bowl here is not an easy bake bowl. Here's an easy bake bowl, so you can kind of get a reference on size. I will make the second one in this. I'm kind of trying this one out to see how this mix fits. All right, so it calls for two cakes. Now, this mix itself, uh, I don't know the exact year because it came with a bunch of other mixes. I have, well, you know, I have a very large collection of Easy Bake mixes and items. Okay, let's just say it's not that old. All right, so let's just get that in the bowl. Now, I went back to some of my earlier uh, recipe books, the original Easy Bake books. And it called for three teaspoons of water. So I'm going to follow that for this one. And then we'll mix her up. So this, so let's see. This is one teaspoon. All right, here we go. One. Two. And three. Now this particular uh, measuring spoon came with the oven. Uh, that you I showed you earlier. So let's just mix this up. And this is a good bowl for mixing. I kind of like it better than the Easy Bake bowls. They're very wide and shallow. This kind of supports it like a regular mixing bowl better in this little area here. As I'm doing this, I'm trying to break up some of them little harder crumbs in off to the side. Now, I do have two ovens, but I'm going to bake them both in the Easy Bake. Okay, there we go. Let's get tray number one. Ah, very nice. Okay. I'll tell you what, I think I'm going to get this one in the oven and I'll do the other one but I want to go over the oven real quick with you all right so here is the oven I'm using now this oven has a special warming spot which I also like for making the videos right there this was the original warming tray that came with it it fit right over this piece of the oven there a little burner there and there's a light on there it's now saying cook or bake and the light means it's on and then this oven now there's a lot of people that go to some of my videos and say that was recalled. This is the only oven that was recalled, and it was not a mandatory recall, meaning you didn't have to actually go with the recall. And then they came up with this little adapter piece that you'd put on the front. Now, preferably for me, what I'm doing here, it's uh, inconvenient. So as an adult, I think I'm okay. I won't burn myself, and we should be okay. But that is there, and it is available. So now we're gonna take our cake, and then this oven had two pushers. It had the push-in pan pusher, and then it had this to actually take the uh, cakes out. And then this little dot here changed colors when it was cool to the touch. So let me give you a little better perspective of getting that into the oven. So you would just push this in. Okay, so it's 12 minutes. So we will set a timer, and I will come back, and we will get the next cake ready. All right, time for cake mix number two. 
Ooh, let me just throw that around in the kitchen. And as you see, this is the traditional, what you would call, easy bake bowl. Let me just take a look inside, a little bit left. Just a tiny bit. Now, smell is just fine. Like I said, these are not old mixes. All right, so again, three tablespoons. But let me do this first. Let me just kind of... Okay, so this one actually seems better than the last one. You just never know. So let's do three teaspoons again. Maybe I'll do it this way. Okay, we're done with that, so that'll go in the sink. See, it doesn't all stay in the middle in a taller, more traditional mixing bowl. This is a flatter, wider bowl, so you gotta move things around. Let me grab my spatula this time. Okay, then I can clean this off better. All right. So I contacted uh, Todd Coopy from the book to see if there was any more photographs, any more historical evidence of the actual contests. And uh, he said it probably would be in local newspapers, which makes sense because, you know, locally you'd want to cover it, right? So I'm sure the information is out there. Someone would have to go through all the microfiche. Is that microfiche? What was that called? Remember that? I think it was called microfiche. And then go to where the contests were held, grab the papers from those years, and they would be able to find pictures. Because I was curious to see, looking at the recipe, I have a smaller version to fit the mini kitchen. Okay, make the cakes according to directions, let cool. Mix milk and pudding. Fold pudding and cool whip together. That's a lot. A whole tub of cool whip. That's a big bowl. And then in a trifle dish or glass bowl, layer the cake, then cover some with, with some of the pudding mixture, then sprinkle half of the candy, repeat layers, chill until served. So I'm using a score Heath candy bar, one of those, which I have, which I need to crush. So that is a much bigger bowl. Now it says one serving. So what I'm guessing is the contest, you had to make one large... Um, for the judges to sample, right? I'm not sure, because you probably can make two or three little ones, uh, but I'll just do it like they say, and I'll probably make just one small one with the ingredients, but let's see, let me check the one in the oven now. We got a few more minutes, and then we'll put this one in. Okay, so this is the pan grabber. There's a little door on this side that opens and closes, so let's open it. Let's, it should auto open, but I don't know, I always found this one very fidgety and hard to work with. Should have the pan. It's in there. And see how steamy hot it is now. In the original video, I showed that go back to its original color. So let's just take that here. I can just pull this window down and see if we can get in my, my warming tray. There we go. Okay. That one's set. Let's grab this one. So I think by the time I get everything else ready, I should be able to start the filling so let's do that all right so it called for one heat bar even though it was a two heat bar pack we'll have to see what happens to another heat bar and then i know heat bars are pretty tough let me try with my little standard knife here if i can even cut it without okay we'll cut it said chop let me grab a oh that's the timer so 
I need to set it for four more minutes because I had let me set that four minutes start. Sorry, I didn't warn you about that. Let me grab another one of my knives from this little set. This little knife set I had custom made years ago. I don't remember the video I introduced it on, but keep chopping. I'll chop this until I feel we're close to pulling that other one out of the oven and then we'll call it quits. I tried to make this knife set to model like your kitchen standard size kitchen knife so this would be more like a vest vegetable chopping knife. Now they say never drag your knife across, but you can do that. These are sharp. These were custom made real knives. Two minutes. Probably could use one of those little electric choppers, but it might have powdered it too much. I want the little chunks. That's pretty good. I have a minute, so. That'll give you a nice bite. seconds so get ready headphone users five seconds okay let's get the cake all right oh that one looks pretty good too a little brown on the edge it's hard to tell in these little this little uh, grabber but uh, let me get it on top of the stove okay yes I see a little brown on the edges now curiosity I don't know and you're, if you're a baker, curiosity is always just kind of like, you know, check underneath. Well, it is brown. Brown on the bottom, brown on the sides. Okay, we should be good. Okay, here we go. Now it says, milk and pudding shall be mixed together. Now I'm guessing that they didn't necessarily want the contestants to scale it to, you know, standard easy bake size. I'm not sure what the official rules were. Okay. Cup and a half. Cold milk. Oh, 
Oh, you might, I have a little mixer nearby. Let's see. Let's get that. That's just for fun. It's part of the mini kitchen. I had grabbed it out of one of the cabinets because I was doing some adjusting of supplies. Look at this little one. I have a full size one too. Tried it. Let's just see. Just a little bit. It's definitely thickened up now, which is nice. Now it says fold pudding and cool whip together. Now I'm assuming it should say fold the cool whip into the pudding, not the other way around. But just getting them together. All right. Let's just put lumps in at a time. Okay, now we'll just carefully fold that. Mm. Don't want to mix it too much. Okay. I mean, this is a big recipe, if you ask me. To think about it, those two little cakes. You know, unless I'm not seeing that there's a miniature cool whip somewhere in the store. Or the recipe actually was scaled and they didn't say that in the directions. Either way, it looks good, doesn't it? mixed well. I mean that in itself requires a huge tribal dish. Alright, so now what I'm going to do is scale this into something else smaller and then make a smaller tribal. How's that so? Or two. I'll grab a couple. I think that's good. All right, so I'm always questioning my decisions that I do the right thing. Is it the right scale in regards to the original recipe? It has to be because a cup and a half milk is a lot of milk and you're going to get a lot of filling. But let me just take my cake and cut it. I'm not just going to lay like a cake flat in there. That's not going to give me enough texture and height. Just gonna put a little layer down. Right, it said cake first, I hope so. Layer the cake, yes. All right, one more little piece. Looks like we'll be able to get maybe four layers. Okay, then some of this. layers but hey it'll all work out in the end ok 
and then repeat. Now it's spread half of the candy. Now that to me, I don't know, what do you all think? Then repeat. Okay. My layers are not showing as good as I would want. So this next layer, I'm going to put the cake more towards the outer edge. All right. Now, this cake came out a little fluffier than the other one. Big, nice though. You really want that to show. Last layer. Well, we're just gonna have to go that because that's all the cake. Lots of that, huh? And then one more layer of this. I think I want that on the top. Fill my little bowl. Now it says refrigerate after this. Okay. And then on top, the last sprinkler. All right. Let's get that in our refrigerator and I'll clean up and then we'll come back and give it a taste. All right, the moment I have been waiting for, hopefully you as well, right out of the refrigerator. Now, uh, I think it came out pretty good. I'm happy with the results. Um, wasn't sure exactly what to scoop it out with. Then I remember, ooh, this is good for scooping, especially on my Oreo cookie videos. Now, would you put it on a plate or would you put it in a bowl? I don't know. Not something I make often, so let's just scoop out some for you as our guest. Make sure you get all the little pieces in there and some cake. And then, oh, I want to get this cake right here. I'm going to scoop this and this, get the cake and all the goodies. I don't think that's enough though. A little more of the goodies. Okay, so if you're adverse to chewing sounds, this will be the time where I say, I'm going to take a bite. All right. And would you eat it with a fork? Well, this is close to me, so I'm going to eat it with a fork. Grab a piece of cake. Mmm, look at that. With some crunchy morsels. All right, here we go. Give it a taste. Mmm. The pudding, nice and creamy and smooth. The cake has a little bite, and then you get the crunch. I think I want to dig down for a bigger piece of cake. Right there. Got a little piece. Wasn't enough, you know what I'm saying? I'm going to say overall it came out good. What do you think about that recipe? Okay, you could try it just without Easy Bake Cake. Just use any yellow cake. 
Much better bite. Well, there you go. I did it. That was the first recipe in those series, the toffee trifle cake. I need some water or some milk to wash that down with. And thanks for watching, everybody. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you have any suggestions or feedback, I'm always open to any, you know, constructive criticism. And thanks for watching. Later. If you're looking for the item you just saw in the video, click here. Watch more videos by clicking here. Don't forget to share on social media and give a thumbs up. Hey, LPS Dave. What's up, Butch? Make sure they don't forget to subscribe. Oh, yeah. Please click here to subscribe to Lucky Penny Shop. And always remember when you see a lucky penny, pick it up.